This video is entitled What a Data Model Has, and it accompanies BUIS 2400 Topic 1 and is video C in this series. I'm Dr. Renault, and I'll be taking you through this video presentation. This video accompanies Data Modeling Made Simple by uh, Hoberman and his Chapter 3 specifically. So, what does a data model have? What are the important parts of a data model? Well, we've talked about a data model has to be concise and precise and, and uh, contains relationships and contains only types, and we've talked about that. But a data model, because it's a model of a real-world situation, uh, a real-world data problem or something, has got scope. And uh, from other classes, you might have seen this word, but if you haven't, that's okay. Scope uh, defines the boundaries around a system. You can think of it as the fence around a system or the wall that surrounds a system. You know, the scope can be as the scope of a project can be as small as a little standalone application that doesn't interface with anything else, just a little tiny project. It could be as big as a departmental project, um, accounts receivable, accounts payable, something of that sort. Um, it could be a program. Now, a program is a very specific word used in project management circles, and a program is a group of coordinated projects, um, kind of like the uh, uh, space program, like one of NASA's programs is a whole series of, of little projects that all link together. So is that a boundary around the scope of your data model? Or is the scope of your data model the entire industry or something global or a, a huge multinational company or whatever? So before we get started looking at our data model, before we start defining data models, and going into the actual bits of a data model, let's just say that data models have to have a scope, a boundary that surrounds them. Now, because data models are representing data, and data is kind of multidimensional, uh, data models also have another type of scope, and I'm going to show that in the next slide. In addition to the, to the wall around a data model, um, there also needs to be a lid on the data model to keep it up and down in uh, its abstraction. For instance, are we creating a data model for an app, and are we going to make a very abstract, high-level business general idea model of the app, or are we going to create a, kind of a database idea, kind of a technical vision of the app, or are we going to finally create the database, the data store, the data model that's going to represent the real data, the real use, the real world, how we're going to actually build it. You can see how those are different levels of abstraction. You know, looking at data from the business up there flying around in the clouds, kind of looking down and going, eh, okay, we need that. Um, whereas we get closer, more technical, we would get down into, well, we need this and this and this and this. But when we get down to the low level, the end user abstraction within scope, it's going to go into all the details of all the tables and all the fields and all that. But we'll get into that in subsequent videos. So scope is not only the boundary around, but the scope has to include the level of, of abstraction within the data model. Another thing a data model needs to take into account is the time of, of the data model. Um, and what I mean by the time, I mean data is temporal in nature. It has a, a time that it exists, a time that it is created. Um, so our data model needs to be sure to include all of the ideas of time. Are we looking at a data model of the data today? Are we looking at a historical data model? Are we looking at a future data model? Are we trying to model all the future data that's going to be coming in? So our data model needs to take that into account. Plus, our data model needs to remember and track the time of events, of happenings, of changes, of of all of that also. So, but, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of... Uh, 
it's kind of the two different types of, of temporal thing. We need to remember to track the temporal nature of the data itself, but our data model also exists in a time. Is it, Again, is this the data model of now? Is this the data model of the future? So you can see that, that we're going to be looking at lots of, of temporal issues as well as we go through data modeling. A third aspect of every good data model from scope to time is function. Because if we don't understand the business uh the business model, the relation of this data model to other data models, if we don't understand the flow of data in and out of this application to other systems, um, but, but function. So we need to model function, the business function, the application functions, and we also need to always strive to look for how to make it flexible, how to make it abstract to the point that it's going to be it's going to be flexible i mean that's that's basically it instead of of defining a field as something specific and you only have these two choices there are techniques to allow for more choices to be added later without rewriting anything so so we also need to scope Time and function are all things that we need to be looking at when we're creating a data model. And the fourth thing we need to look at when we're creating a data model, scope, time, function, is format. What is the general format of the data model? Now, this kind of also relates back to the scope of the data model when I was talking about the abstraction of the data model. But um, this format is how the data model is going to be presented at the end or, or, or where we're done with this data model before we move into another data model. Because we may have to model, a, for instance, we're building an airplane. We're going to start with a little model and move to a bigger model and move to a bigger model. And, and they each have a different scope. They each have a different temporal nature. They each have a different function. Because the model we're going to put in a wind tunnel isn't the same model we're going to put on the desk of the CEO to show off what it looks like. Um, and the last, the, the fourth type of, of what is found in a data model is, um, is the format of the data model. And the formats of the data model follow, uh, again, from abstract, highly abstract, to lowly abstract. And the high abstract model would be called the subject area model. And it uh, it's called the SAM. And we'll talk about SAMs in, in subsequent chapters. We'll talk about SAMs for, for several weeks as we go through data modeling. But a subject area model kind of looks at the data from really far away. It just kind of finds the three or four or two or three or the the big things and the big relationships and and there's no way we could build an application using a subject area model but it's something that we could use to discuss with stakeholders discuss with with users discuss with with business people with management and say these are the kind of idea this is what I've heard this is where the data needs and and they'll say yeah, that should work. Yeah. Oh, well, but then they might say, well, what about this? And you'll go, crap. And you'll have to go and re restructure your subject area model. Once you get your subject area model pretty well the way you want it, we create something called a logical data model. And a logical data model goes into um, the relationships have to be actually creatable. There are rules about certain kinds of relationships have to be have to be modified, and we'll go through that in, again in, in future lectures. But a logical data model goes through and gets all of the logic of the data model to work. So the subject area model looks at the subject of the model. The logical data model looks at all the logic of the model to make sure that the model is logically sound and can be created. And then the physical data model, um, 
which is the lowest level of abstraction of the three types of models, the three formats of models, is, uh, is, is actually how we're going to create it in the database system, how we're actually going to implement it in the database system. So it would be the least abstract because this is how we're actually going to build the real thing. So think about an architect building a building, an architect. You know, you've got a, you've hired an architect to build you a home, or to design you a home. Well, the architect is going to come to you and sit down with you, and you're going to say, "Well, I want this, and I want this, and I'd like this, and I want this, and I and I and I want three bedrooms, and I want three bathrooms, and I want this. I want a a kitchen with an island, and I want this, and I want this, and I need, and and I've got about this much money to spend, and the architect's going to go." Give me a give me a day or two. Give me a week or two, and they'll come back with sketches. They'll come back with like one page pictures of the house with kind of rough floor plans. That would be a subject area model because you can kind of look at it and go, "No, I don't like that." Ooh, that's cute. And then you would say, "But could you move the bathroom over here and move this over here?" And let's and and the architect will be like, "Oh yeah, for sure, we can do this." And and, and so that all happens. When we get to the logical data model, that would be kind of a more detailed diagram, not the actual diagram the builder is going to use, but a more detailed diagram that shows some of the inner workings of the house, some of the inner structure of the house, the logical data model, the basic structure, super frame, subframe, uh, foundation have, have all kind of been figured out but we've not yet gotten the plans, the blueprints that the builder is going to use to actually build it. It's just trying to make sure it's all going to work. And once the logical data model understands the building and we can get the building to, to work and stand and be safe, then the architect will create the final blueprints. And the final blueprints are the ones that include the engineering, include where every wire goes, every light switch is, every outlet, every piece of plumbing pipe, absolutely everything. All the HVAC heating and ventilations and all of that are all in that final blueprint. And that is the physical data model that exactly models the physical reality of the building. And then the builder kind of takes that and goes, oh, and builds it exactly, or darn close, to how it was on the paper. So you can see the different formats of, of, a, of an architectural diagram. Those are the same kind of format levels of a, of a data, data, uh, data, model, data model diagram. And we call those the subject area model, the logical data model, and the physical data model. This concludes Chapter 1, uh, Video C. I'd like to say thank you for watching and remind you, this video and the presentation was copyright 2020 by James Imrano, Ph.D. All rights are reserved.